The first operational laser was tested in 1960 at the Hughes Research Laboratory in California. The US Army, through its research staff at Missile Command, or MICOM, was interested in the possible use of lasers as guidance for indirect fire weapons and anti-tank use. It was hoped a laser beam could illuminate a tank, with a seeker guiding a missile onto the source of the reflected light. Contracts were issued in June 1963 for research into different technical approaches to developing seekers which could track, or guide, on pulsed laser radiation, and by the end of 1964, guidance units had been successfully tested under laboratory conditions. In September 1964, Texas Instruments was contracted by MICOM to explore the possibility of adapting the Shrike anti-radar air-to-ground missile to track on reflected pulsed laser radiation. However, because of the perceived ground combat requirements in the Vietnam conflict, the Army decided to reduce funding on laser-guided research. Meanwhile, in 1964, the Air Force created the Directorate of Technical Assistance and Support. The purpose of Detachment 5, as it was more generally known, was to provide a response to immediate tactical operational needs. In a tri-service meeting in April 1965, Detachment 5 was briefed on MICOM's work, and the possibility of using laser guidance on a free-fall gravity bomb was discussed. The briefing confirmed the Air Force concept of a laser guidance system which could direct a free-fall gravity bomb towards an illuminated target. In May 1965, proposals from North American Aviation NA -A, and Texas Instruments or TI, were forwarded to the Deputy for Limited War Aeronautical Systems Division or ASD, with a strong preference for the TI design. Both prototypes were designed around an optical assembly. The target was illuminated by a laser beam directed from an aircraft, and the bomb would be released within the field of view of the laser sensor. The optical assembly then focused the reflected laser energy onto a detector. The NA A prototype used a proportional control guidance mechanism. This produced a close approximation of the ballistic arc of an unguided bomb, while the TI version used a simpler bang bang mechanism developed during earlier work with the Army's pulsed laser system. As no adjustment was made for the size of off-axis errors, an undulating glide path resulted. Though proportional guidance was believed to be more promising, it was more complicated than the bang-bang system, which was also considerably cheaper. Testing of the NA-A prototype began in October 1966. The third of four drops had a missed distance of 24 feet. The TI test series began in the summer of 1966. The first four drops produced similar results to the NA-A prototype, but because of its lower unit cost, an additional four drops allowed greater experimentation, and missed distance was reduced to 10 feet. The final drop was of particular interest, as it was the only drop in which the target was illuminated by an airborne laser. During testing, Valuable information was also provided on operational capabilities. The NA-A seeker required the delivery aircraft to aim itself directly at the target while the seeker acquired it, and alerted the pilot to release the bomb. This required a launch sequence of at least 10 seconds, possibly exposing the aircraft to prolonged ground fire. The TI sensor, however, could acquire the designated target after release allowing an unmodified aircraft to deliver the weapon using conventional tactics. The project was transferred to the Air Force Armament Division, and an engineering prototype contract was signed with TI in May 1967. During this time, the Air Force had decided to put the Mark 84 bomb back into production, and the 50 TI seeker kits were to use a mix of Mark 84 and M117 munitions. At the suggestion of ASD staff who wished to expedite development, 7th Air Force submitted a Southeast Asia operations requirement in March. This emphasised the need for greater bombing accuracy, and specifically suggested the laser guidance system as a possible solution. In June 1967, briefings to members of the Air Staff presented three production alternatives, with varying degrees of development risk and operational dates. The medium risk early operational date option was selected. The laser guided bomb was assigned an extremely high funding rating and designated project paveway, 
with a project office within ASD. In September, the Air Force defined the performance characteristics of guided bombs. The circular error probable, or CEP, was to be a maximum of 25 feet, compared to a CEP of 400 feet for unguided bombs. Guidance reliability of at least 80% was desired, with delivery from either a dive or a level run. Operational deployment would be no later than June 1968. The engineering prototype test series began at Eglin AFB in November 1967. Due to the emphasis on using the Mark 84, a significant design change was required, which resulted in the rear control fins being replaced by front canard control fins. Development Directive No. 69 approved production of 293 Seeker kits in January 1968, with a unit price of $16,000, which was within budget option limits. This marked the termination of the research and development process, though TI continued to modify the Seeker and control design during production. Theatre evaluation took place in Southeast Asia from May to August 1968. Claims of increased accuracy and destruction were confirmed during evaluation, and it was argued that use of the M117 should be discontinued in favour of the Mark 84. As a result, the Air Force contracted to purchase an additional 1,000 Mark 84 laser kits. However, due to restrictions on the bombing of targets in North Vietnam from 1968 to 1971, laser-guided bombs found limited use. Their effectiveness was proved during Operation Linebacker in 1972. The Fan Ho Bridge, also known as the Dragon's Jaw, had been attacked repeatedly since 1965. A total of 873 sorties had targeted the bridge, dropping hundreds of bombs, but minimal damage had been inflicted. On April 27, 1972, F-4 Phantoms attacked the bridge using laser and TV-guided bombs, displacing a section of its western end. A follow-up attack on May 13 by 14 Phantoms using 2,000 and 3,000 pound LGBs put the bridge out of action. The successful introduction of laser-guided bombs had provided the Air Force with the capability to strike and destroy virtually any target that could be seen by the pilot and acquired by the seeker. 